So today is day one of Psychedelic Science Conference 2023 in Colorado, the biggest one in history. Um, 9,000 plus people are attending and it's been growing since the late 90s. Uh, my wife and I couldn't attend this year, uh, nor have we ever attended, but we are looking forward to. We've part been part of other um, gatherings like the Horizons Conference and um, over the last decade, we have incorporated psychedelics into our lifestyle. Um, the most in-depth period was 2020-12 through 2017-2018, and uh, it was life-changing because we focused on ayahuasca ceremonies by spending time in Peru. So today I'll share one of my um, own experiences with that particular medicine, and within that cosmology of medicines, of plant medicines, and um, the practice of curanderismo, the fasts that take place in curanderismo. Now, I haven't, over the past decade, it's been over a decade now, because 21 was when I started, and now I'm 32, so it's definitely been a formative part of my life, but I haven't really shared personal experiences um, here and there with loved ones who I thought may benefit, but... Um, as the community generally does with experience, the psychedelic community realizes, the people, the individuals within it, realizes that putting into practice and integrating those experiences that come with a lot of imagery, visions, realizations, um, breakdowns, that more than the actual experiences themselves, the integration and the putting into action to set a good example is what really, really matters. So my wife and I really started living by that uh, because we found that um, it's like describing a color to someone who hasn't seen that particular color before. And um, it just, it's um, not very productive. So now that I'm on the eve of the Sonoran University of Health Sciences, my enrollment there in the fall and beginning my MD, in naturopathic medicine uh, and over the course of the decade you know having written a couple of books called the tree boat series and having this little one and um, exploring um, the physical side of health and wellness all of these things uh, as well as spiritual practices and breathing techniques have stemmed from our psychedelic work as well as our integration of that psychedelic work and um, it's really become you know a lot of times people isolate psychedelics from life and they say do you do them and, and like how hard did you trip and a lot of the old terminology that is applied to it based on um, the superficial understanding of it the way we have begun to understand it and that really helped us uh, view it that way is spending time with families, indigenous families in Peru, uh, especially, who were raising their children around these medicines and had uh, t at least two ceremonies a week and would have a beautiful lifestyle practice around them. That includes uh, bathing with floral water, praying over water, prayers, singing to the children during the ceremonies, um, and I mean, it's, it's not, it's not even describable. The, the, it's what you would expect the, almost the mundane and the nitty gritty of what daily life looks like in any family who has a practice, maybe a spiritual practice or, um, um, a religious practice. But anyway, so to go into a particular experience, one that I, um, haven't shared really with anyone and, I don't know what number this experience is because after you, you um, live a lifestyle a certain way, you lose track of the quantitative um, assessments, so the quantitative documentation. So I remember the first 10, the first 15, the first 20, and then over the course of five years, especially in depth with ayahuasca in particular, you um, stop counting. So this was sometime in 2016 after... Um, my time at Takiwasi, and actually it was still during the time we were living in Tarapoto, and um, at the recommendation of one of the psychologists who worked at Takiwasi, and um, uh, 
Um, also, the director, Jacques Mabi, um, thought very highly of this one particular person, this Curandero, who I won't mention by name just in case uh, he wants privacy, um, because it's amazing how you can look people up these days on Facebooks and others, uh, Facebook and other places. Um, anyway, we traveled about three hours into a uh, different part of Peru than Tarapoto, and uh, we came upon this little plot of land with a little family. And this is one of those situations where it was more of like we went and experienced something and then left, where and left, left back to the city of Tarapoto, the jungle city where we were living at the time. In many instances, we actually lived with the curandero or the people that were practicing. But in this case, we went for a particular visit, and this young, um, middle aged, but still young by many, um, by relatively young by many standards in Peru. Um, a very good curandero and it was like a little patch of land in a field and there were thatched huts and there were a few farm animals um, there was um, dirt floors as you'd imagine and a simple little lifestyle and even the maloka there the ceremonial hut wasn't complete so it was more of like um, tarp and um, wood uh, a cut wood to hold up the structure and being in that hut was um, in the dark pitch black was very cool and moist very very um, earthy literally because we were on the ground but comfortable anyway so that night started and um, instead of going through all the details of what an ayahuasca ceremony looks like because a lot of people are catching on to that and those details can be found through other experiences and descriptions uh, that people share and uh, through books. But anyway, the night w went on and it wasn't very intense and the night was still young. And so there was a sec second cup served if anybody wanted. And uh, there was just uh, like three or four of us, my wife and I, my then fiance at the time and um, the psychologist who worked there who became a friend and then one of his companions. And um, then it was just um, this curandero. And the reason why I wanted to share this experience in particular is because not because of the um, necessarily the powerful visions or the um, the lights and the, the glamour that can be expressed in psychedelic experiences, but particularly because of the intensity of a catharsis that I experienced and a very um, um, almost paternal, maternal based lesson I learned in this ceremony, which was uh, I started seeing glimpses of my childhood, uh, glimpses of me in elementary school and middle school. And um, I was being given a perspective on the narratives I began to create and carry as a young kid who you know, has landed in this world like this little one and is figuring out coping mechanisms and self-defense mechanisms. And when I describe that in a ceremonial experience like ayahuasca, that this starts happening, it even this sounds romanticized where you picture a movie and, you know, somebody goes into like flashback mode. And uh, what I want to really emphasize is that before all those wonderful visions and glimpses of the past, it's like a very intense visceral experience as well. So think about a time you've been anxious and you're recalling a memory, except more vivid, more bodily intense, where the anxiety is kind of coursing through your veins and you're learning to breathe through it because of the waves of the power of this um, altered state is overtaking you. So um, the beauty is it seems that a good curandero in the medicines that they work with know where you're at in terms of your breathing capacity and your ability to breathe through anxiety and it's very interesting and sometimes it does overwhelm you just enough so that you lose control of your um, defense mechanism essentially and in this case this was one of those questions where i was squirming i was being pushed to my limit because of the the lessons that were coming through and the hard truths about myself i had to face so in that in those glimpses of my childhood I started seeing how I was creating a narrative. And because I had a weakness in mathematics and science, 
since I was young because that wasn't supported in my household necessarily. That if there was a weakness, we didn't like try to turn toward it and develop that and go in that direction. It was just kind of like, oh, that's just, that's what it is. And, you know, the, you're, you're weak in that. And so I started creating this narrative in my head that that's something I'm weak in. And we all hear this all the time. There's always somebody who says, I was an English major or um, I, I don't do math. I don't do science. I've never been good. And it's become a trope. It's just become something that we all say. And it is very true that some of our strengths lie in different capacities. So somebody may be more artistic because that was what was promoted and it was also a natural inclination or maybe there's a natural talent for it. But it becomes much more than that. And in this vision, in this experience, I was being shown that I started neglecting studies. I started pushing away and poo-pooing anything that didn't fit in my uh, circle of strength, in my little um, sphere of comfort. And I started augmenting, you know, writing, reading, language, and appearing smart as I can in that and being as smart as I can in that. Whereas neglecting all the rest and creating a persona and a personality out of it. And, um, you know, this may just sound very reasonable and very, um, very like, okay, well, what's so bad about that to anyone listening? But when you experience it on a level where it becomes a part of your personality and identity, that's where the painfulness and anxiety starts coming in. It's, you start realizing that there's so much more you could do in life. You don't have to be a mathematician if that's your weakness, but... I started ruling out other options for myself in in a capacity to study and learn something, which included I had never passed the thought, even though my mom and others recommended that or thought of that um, as a honorable and a thing you should do, which is like become a doctor. It was completely out of my mind and my psyche. I had no interest in it. And um, and uh, and I started pushing away um, classes, people, studies, fields of study that had anything to do with it. And uh, though I had a keen interest in astronomy, as most uh, young kids do, you know, the planets and the stars. And uh, I remember wanting to be an astronaut when I was younger, and I um, always had this more intellectual interest in it. Anyway, so the night wore on, and I started seeing flashbacks of the little behaviors as an adolescent I had and how I would create those defense mechanisms and what I would do to leave school early and avoid school and avoid difficult situations. And I started seeing that not only was I doing it as an adolescent, but though it got toned down as time went on because we get better at hiding it. As a teenager, uh, I really became a master at disguising my weaknesses. And not only that, um, but it became part of my identity. So much so that I couldn't see it. It's like the blind spot in when you're driving a car. It's that spot where you just can't see. And a lot of our psyche works that way. And I remember just going through this um, upheaval in myself to see like it got younger and younger. And I was like, wow, a little kid like that. It can't be. I was just innocent. I was just innocent. And what I was being shown by the medicine and by this intense cathartic experience was that, yes, you were innocent in so many ways and you're dark side or your defense mechanisms are just of your way of coping but that way that you were figuring out how to cope doesn't have to be the way you lead your life you can begin to study with a new perspective and a new approach you can start taking an interest in something like mathematics and science and maybe there's a lot more for you out there especially if you're interested in health and wellness and we as these plants and these medicines need more people who are compassionate and interested and are courageous enough to go this deep. But you have to gain the skills to represent us well. And how will you do so? Um, yes, you can write a book and you can do all those things that are your strengths already. But how about rounding yourself out and, and improving that much more? And anyway, there's another whole reason behind why um, the medicines changed my trajectory of what I wanted to do with myself because I was already an anthropologist and then um, I actually went back to school to complete my degree because I had left in the middle of it because of my interest in traveling and such and also a complete um, disillusionment with what school was 
um, for undergraduates, but that's another story. And I realized I wanted to take on more and more of a role where I was um, contributing to medical knowledge through my own experiences with these plant medicines and their healing potential, kind of more being like an emissary for that. And soon as that passion lit up in my heart, the plant medicines and the experiences that um, were resonating with that intention started to open the doors for me, which also meant that they began contributing to the um, to the process I would need to go through to open those rusty, dusty, cobweb-ridden doors that I had closed off in my heart and mind. And that this was part of it, that experience. So um, um, to describe a little bit of like the um, visionary aspect of this is I was describing that I had was beginning to see my childhood. Um, it's like dreaming while awake um, and getting into a state where you're seeing things very vividly and viscerally. So, you know, when those dreams that when you wake up and you have like that feeling like, whoa, am I asleep or am I, am I actually awake? It's happening like that and with intense um, bodily involvement. And um, that's what makes it so real. And um, these are all just words to describe something that's truly indescribable. But, um, you know, even what the painting behind me by Royce and my friend who also painted the oakal seed, who is Peruvian and lives in Pucallpa, actually, and um, uh, is an amazing painter. Um, this, what you're seeing, is also something you could see within the mind's eye in a vivid dream, especially the blues here. Um, for me, this is one of my first experiences with the medicine. I just saw a blue tinted jungle and these intense figures and these serpents, like the most powerfully colorful things you'll ever see behind closed eyes. And, um, you know, it's, uh, it's something that's indescribable and not the point, actually. People get a lot drawn by all of this, but it's actually not the point. And that is quickly learned because, um... A lot of our fears with psychedelics have to do with like, you know, um, you know, you could do the same while meditating and, and this is like a quick way. It's it's um, it's the, the fast food mentality of the um, of the um, modern industrialized, um, especially American culture. And I have to say that um, I had a lot of those doubts when going into it back in the day and I'm really glad I went into it into a traditional context and um, realizing that it's our birthright and actually what happens within the psyche and within the um, body and in the heart the you know the intensity that you experience is like an art form a powerfully um, a powerfully pertinent to the powerfully pertinent to the human experience something just like we learn to drive we learn to use our technology we learn a craft especially you know carpentry pottery um, whatever you can think of that requires diligence and focus and also a creative approach and time these medicines are that way exploring altered states are that way and everything from self-flagellation to um, fasting to the the coffee we drink without a thought, um, tea, all of these things are contributing to minor fluctuations in the state of consciousness. And it is a miracle that out there, there are substances and things that fit perfectly with the receptors in our body, in our brain, and um, open, open, open all kinds of gates of perception, doors of perception, like Aldous Huxley put it. And so, in a nutshell, that experience off of the off of the um, borders of Tarapoto in this village, tiny village in a field in the middle of the night, translated to me going back to school, finishing my anthropology degree, and then picking up pre medical prerequisites and going through all the things I feared I had never taken before. I found a way to avoid it all. Everything from basic physics to chemistry to anything past algebra, all through high school and early college. And I found that um, with a new focus and a new interest and a new time taken, made time 
to experience and learn these things, my perspectives and my sense of rationality, logic, my um, ability to navigate these spaces, psychedelic spaces, and then the opportunities in my life began to open up and I began to perceive things differently. And now um, through different ups and downs and changes, I'm on the cusp of entering uh, an intensive medical school program that um, I've really been looking forward to. And um, all of the things that I do and my wife do have a backdrop of our spiritual outlook and on the material realm, on the, on the realm, on the earth, this connective process through the psychedelics and prayer and through just, you know, meditative living in many ways, which all sounds very um, um, high fluted and uh, with high, um, you know, high expectations on what we assume these things are. It's just a matter of like taking a deep breath while you're cooking or doing dishes and finding the um, finding the rhythm and the the pulse, the metronome style um, 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 timekeeping in that and loving it and really appreciating the things that you do have in life and um, taking time to reflect on that throughout the busy day. And it doesn't have to look like going and sitting cross-legged in a particular position somewhere. It's literally breath by breath in moment by moment where you feel yourself slipping into a more unconscious process. Um, so um, yeah, that's where it stands. And I'm so happy and excited for this um, psychedelic science conference to be happening. And I can't wait to be there myself someday as a naturopathic doctor and a student because uh, the beautiful thing is at the Sonoran University, there's map held events and conferences there as well. And the fact that we'll be in Arizona on a different coast than we've been used to. And um, I hope that, that these um, experiences benefit people, even though I don't share individual psychedelic experiences much. I hope that um, that when people begin to be more open to it as we see it spreading, that they will um, find equal benefit and um, choose to experience these things if it, it feels right for them and they have that calling in a safe and constructive manner. And then also just take the time to integrate, whether that's months, years, weeks, whatever it is, um, before really, um, you know, getting too um, hyped about it all without that cautionary and spiritual approach to it as well. All right, I'm probably bucking our little one. She looks like she's stirring. 